Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Woodwork for Humans, the series where we have been killing it, making our own specialty tools. For instance, last week I made this fantastic little router plane out of nothing but a chisel and a few scraps of hardwood. And it works great. It works so well that it's made me, I don't know, kind of ambitious. And I've been thinking, what are the last few joints and details that haven't been covered by our homemade tools? I've been thinking about drawer construction. So let's say this piece of oak here was the side of a drawer and we wanted to put that bottom piece in. Well, we would need to cut this groove, this very narrow, precise channel, right in the bottom so we could slide that bottom piece in. How are we gonna cut something like this with hand tools? How did the old timers do it back in the day? Well, they had a specialty tool. It was called a plow plane. And as you can see, this is a complex, fancy tool. It's got a movable fence on screw arms. It's got a depth stop and a bunch of different cutters you can put in. So this can cut different grooves of various depths and widths in any piece of wood. It's fantastic. Are we ready to make one of these? <laughs> Maybe next week. Okay, here's the thing about plow planes. These are phenomenal tools, and honestly, we probably could build one of them, but it's gonna be a huge, involved project, and I think it might be unnecessary. When I think about my actual career making furniture, I did a lot of grooves for different components, but they were almost all the same size. They were usually 3 eighths of an inch. So instead of building a super complicated tool, I think we could just build one specialty tool that plows a groove 3 eighths of an inch, and that's gonna take care of 99% of our furniture making needs. And I've already started by prepping this piece of wood. It is dense and it is hard, and I honestly have no idea what it is, but it doesn't matter, it was free. I'm gonna start by cutting a rabbit to match the width of my 3 eighths chisel. So I'll set my homemade marking gauge directly to the chisel and strike a line across the bottom of my stock. This rabbit should be around 3 quarters of an inch wide. My little Craig measuring jig makes it easy to find my depth and strike that line. I want to make things easy for my rabbit plane, so I'll use a chisel to chip out a little trench and define a knife wall that my plane can follow. This is a wide rabbit, so I'm using my plane without its fence, and it can be tricky to start with no guide. A great technique is to tip the plane over and put just the corner of the iron into your knife wall and then take a light pass. You can see the little chip just curling up as I deepen that knife wall. As I take the second and third stroke with the plane, I'll slowly bring it down until the cutter is in full contact with the wood, and I can start taking some full shavings. Having that shoulder established really helps guide the plane. Now, I'm still learning how to use this homemade rabbit plane, and one thing I learned in this project is that the plane is going to have a hard time taking shavings with the whole cutter probably because the iron is straight and not skewed. So as I worked down my rabbit, I eventually lost my shoulder line and my joint fell out of square. No problem. I'll just move my shoulder line up about a quarter inch and reestablish that crisp 90 degree edge. The moral of the story is that my rabbit plane works really well up to about a half inch in width. If I need to cut wide rabbits in the future, I'll just cut the joint in two stages. I'll take out most of the waste with the first pass, and then come in and take the last quarter inch. Working with narrower cuts like this, the tool is just as accurate as any other tool I own. My grooving plane is actually going to be a lot like a traditional molding plane. So I'll grab one of those out of the collection and use it for all the measurements and angles in this build. Of course, you might not have a vintage molding plane to copy, so I've got a complete set of plans available, and you can find a link to those down in the description. Once I have the bed, the escapement, and the mouth marked with a knife, I'm ready to start cutting the throat. Once again, I grab my chisel and make a knife wall. This time, it's going to guide my dazuki saw as I cross-cut the bed. I get the first angle cut perfectly, but something went wrong with the second one, and I drifted off my line. No problem. Again, I'll just move my line over a little bit and cut a new bed. I admit, this build is not going nearly as smoothly as my last several tool builds, but that happens. Anytime you make a mistake, try not to get frustrated and lose your temper. You can recover from most of your screw-ups. 
I've already made two pretty big mistakes in this build, but I'll give you a spoiler alert. The tool still came out fine. Making the throat a little bit wider won't hurt anything, and soon enough, I'm chiseling out the waist. With the bulk of the wood removed, I need the bottom to be very flat and level. For this job, I really need a router plane. Luckily, I built one in last week's video, and it's just the thing for removing the last bits of waste and smoothing out that inside wall. This is going to be a laminated plane, like my previous builds, so we want to get this recess as perfect as possible while we still have easy access. I'll give the walls a light pairing, and I can also use the side of my chisel as a straight edge to make sure my walls are actually true. Another excellent tool for plane making is a regular old file. The one I'm using here is a Nicholson handy file. It's got a built-in handle, different teeth on each face, and one edge is ground safe, which means it has no teeth. Put that safe edge toward the inside while you're filing the walls, and the file won't cut that nice surface we just made with the router plane. I'll throw a link to this tool down in the description. Now I'm ready to glue on the second half of the plane, which is just a scrap of walnut. I'll spread my glue thinly on the plane body, which will keep the glue out of the throat. I'll also add a few grains of salt to keep things from sliding around. For clamping, my bench makes an excellent surface because it's solid and flat. I only need a couple of clamps because I'm adding a scrap block to the top to even out that clamping pressure. I'll also clean up most of the glue squeeze out while it's still wet. That'll save me time later on. When the project comes out of the clamps, it's already starting to look like a good joinery plane. I left the top overhanging on purpose, and now I'll plane that down and level it off. The lower part of the plane, which we might call the skate, is a little bit too long, and it's slightly uneven. I'll use my measuring tool and a plane to straighten that out and make it consistent. Keeping an eye on these details will make the tool work much better. Now, I've got a nice piece of maple that's already the right thickness, and I've laid out a wedge in pencil. I've got good details for the wedge in the plans, but you can also just draw these freehand. They are not complicated. I'll do most of the shaping with my Rayoba saw and a plane, and I'll cut the curves with a coping saw. When my wedge is roughed out, it's exactly what I want. A nice tight fit and way too big. I like to leave lots of extra material on my wedges and slowly dial them in for a correct fit. Now, slowly test fitting the wedge is a little bit tedious to watch, so let's skip to the part where it mostly fits. Now the wedge is much narrower. It fills the whole mouth of the plane, and you can see a relief cut in the back for the chisel handle. I'll mark the bottom of the wedge where it sticks out of the mouth and then cut that flush. I did a test cut off camera, and the plane removes material well enough, but the mouth jams really badly. You can see how the shavings are stuck in there. We need a much better escapement for chip clearance, and I'll draw in a few curves with my pencil and slowly carve them out with a chisel against my bench hook. Most people just use the bench hook for sawing, but it also gives you a safe and controlled stop for chiseling. I've got a whole video on making these. They're quick and easy. I made the same cut on the plane body, and now the mouth has a gently curved opening that should let chips just fall right out. I'll finish shaping the body by cutting curves in the corners and fairing them in with a sanding stick. You're going to be pushing pretty hard on this tool, so take your time and shape the heel into something comfortable. You can also check out my rabbit plane video for a more detailed look at shaping these joinery planes. Now, a tool like this really benefits from a depth stop, and you'll find depth stops on most antique plow plants. I'm going to do a pair of them for stability. I have two thin pieces of hard maple, and they're going to be perfect for this high friction application. I'll put the pieces on my plane body, score the edges with a knife, chisel a knife wall, and use my dazuki to make some shallow cross cuts. Finally, something goes right in this build, and I get all four cuts on the first try. I'm a professional. I chisel the waste away from my saw cuts, and soon enough, I've got my router plane and I'm leveling out these recesses. My stops fit really well, but I'm also going to need thumb screws to adjust their depth and lock them in place, and that takes a little bit of planning. Here, you can see I've drilled two small holes all the way through the plane. These holes are going to guide my auger bits from both sides of the tool and ensure that everything lines up. Now, I'm going to bore these holes out with a large bit on one side and I've marked my bit with tape so I don't go too deep. Then, I'll flip the plane over and bore out from the other side, 
all the way through. The exact bit sizes you are going to use depend on your hardware. Hold on, this will all make way more sense in just a second. With the holes drilled, I'll mix up a little five minute epoxy and put a little bit just around the edges of my holes. Then I have these quarter inch nuts and I'll drop these into my holes and add a little bit more epoxy around the edges. You want to resist the urge to just slather glue in there. You'll only gum things up, and these nuts don't need much adhesive to stay in place. You could probably just use a couple of dots of super glue. While the epoxy sets up on that hardware, I'll also need slots cut in my maple pieces. You can see I've bored two quarter inch holes that define the ends of my slots, and I can just take a chisel and slowly chip out the waste between them. Be careful here, as you're chiseling with the grain, and it's pretty easy to split these pieces. You can also just thread a coping saw into your holes and saw the waste out. By the time my slots are cut, the epoxy is dry enough and I can assemble my depth stops. I found these great little wing screws down at the big box store. They were about $1.50 each. Put them together with some little washers and you have excellent no fuss hardware. I will drop a link to these down in the description. With the hardware installed, my depth stops are easily adjustable. I can slide them up and down to wherever I need them and give my wing screws a little twist to lock everything down. Now, I can slide in my chisel and my wedge and give the whole setup a tap to tighten it. And now, we're ready to test. So, I've got my plane and I'm ready to set it up to make the first cut. First thing I want to do is make sure my iron is set at the correct depth. It's really good to begin your cuts with a very, very light cut. So I'll tap it in a few times with the hammer and then take a piece of scrap stock and just run it along that cutter. And I'm looking for it to take the lightest possible shaving. When I've got that, I can also set up my depth stops. I use my little blue measuring jig for that and then everything's set and I can get going. Now, there's no fence on this tool, but a lot of similar early tools also didn't have a fence. The craftsman would tack a batten down to the stock. A batten is just a strip of wood that's gonna guide the plane. I'll take this narrow scrap and I'm just gonna clamp it across my test board with a couple of C-clamps. I'll double check that the batten is in the right place, and then I can bring in my plane. I'm gonna tilt it just slightly to the left and take a very light shaving with the corner of the cutter. And that's gonna help me establish a shoulder. You can see the little curl of wood the plane creates while I make this tiny little starting cut. Now, with an even two-handed stroke, I start deepening my groove. You can also stop at this point and tap the iron a little deeper. You can take a fairly heavy cut with this tool. Once you've got that groove established, you can really waste away material quickly. The tool is no longer jamming and I have long shavings that fall right out. I've got my depth stops set, so I just keep blasting away until the plane stops cutting. Then I have a groove at a consistent depth over its whole length. The corners are crisp and the bottom is flat and even. I can put a piece of stock into my groove and the fit is so tight I kind of have to shove it in. If this were a real component, like a drawer bottom, I would just plane the edge down a tiny bit to get a looser, easier fit. A chisel, a couple scraps of hardwood, a couple random pieces of hardware, and we have an excellent little joinery plane that will plow a groove into pretty much any piece of wood. And instead of making a big complicated plow plane, if I needed another size groove, well, this wasn't very difficult. I would just make a second one of these with a different size chisel. Definitely two or three of them would cover everything you could ever need. And of course, you might wanna make one of these. And obviously, I have a great set of plans on my website and they're very affordable. But as you're watching this build, you might be thinking to yourself, oh, I, I really need to make that rabbit plane and oh, I, I need that router plane too. They're kind of important for making this tool. You might wanna get all of them. And I can make it a little bit more interesting. I've taken my grooving plane, plus my rabbit plane and my router plane, and I've put them together into my specialty plane bundle. And I've got some other specialty planes. Like a couple of weeks ago, we made this inexpensive and very effective spoke shave. And before that, I actually made a low angle jack plane. And it was a lot of fun. I am going to put all five of these plans together into the same bundle. If you were gonna buy them separately, they'd cost you 15 bucks, but I'm gonna sell the whole thing for $10. And once you've got your planes built, you might be thinking, oh, I, I need a little project to test them out on. 
Well, a great project is my nailed, rabbited wall box. It uses several of these planes, and it's quick and it's fun. I'm going to throw that in for free. So, when you buy my specialty plane bundle, you get five joinery planes plus a free project for ten bucks. Go on over to rexkruger.com slash store, pick up the bundle, and build up your shop. And while we're talking, people sometimes ask me, hey Rex, you're always talking about Patreon. What do your patrons get for their monthly contribution? Well, they're going to get this plan, plus they're going to get that whole bundle of plans I just talked about, plus they get all of my plans. And they get early access to all of my videos, they get articles and blog posts and exclusive videos and a bunch of other stuff. I do a lot for my patrons because patronage is what makes all of this possible. If you'd like to get all those free extras, plus be part of an amazing community of craftspeople, go on over to patreon.com slash rexkruger and check out the rewards I have for the people who support this content. And of course, if you're just here watching these videos, I feel incredible gratitude to you too. The viewers make this possible as much as everyone else does. Thanks so much for watching.